So reductive amination is a big part of exam three synthesis. And what it allows you to do is create carbon chains that have nitrogens on them. So for example, if I ever wanted to make, if I want to attach a nitrogen to a carbon chain, how do we do that? Well, the way reductive amination works is you're gonna start with a carbon oxygen double bond. And over the arrow, you're gonna have some kind of nitrogen. Now, if you just want it to be nitrogen, then you just do NH3. But if you want that nitrogen to have carbons attached, then, well, you could do NH2 and then a CH3, and that would add a nitrogen with methyl, or NH and then two methyls. And in each of those respects, what you're basically going to do is you're going to erase that oxygen and put the nitrogen on in place of it, just with enough hyd fewer hydrogens such that it's neutral. And nitrogen needs three bonds to be neutral, so in the first example, if I just did NH3, I would get a carbon-nitrogen double bond, and I just have to re remove two hydrogens such that it's neutral, so NH. For the second one, it's still carbon-nitrogen double bond, but I have one hydrogen and one methyl coming off of that. Actually, let me take that back. I shouldn't have a hydrogen there because I want the nitrogen to be neutral. Three bonds. In the case of this one, though, there's no way of having the two methyls on that nitrogen and it not being positive. And that's when you know what actually happens is you form an enamine for this one, which just means a carbon-nitrogen double bond like that. Now, I wouldn't worry about the particulars of this because the other half of reductive amination is always, this is step one, one of these three would be step one, and step two would then be LiBH3 uh, CN or NADH3CN. These both do the same thing for your purposes. And what this does is it removes the double bond. So it becomes a single bond N at the end. So if I had this thing over here with NADH3CN, I would get carbon nitrogen single bond. And now I just have to add hydrogens to the nitrogen so it's neutral. So if I want it to be a single bond, that nitrogen needs two hydrogens to be neutral because the nitrogen with three bonds is neutral. And here I make the carbon nitrogen double bond a single bond now. It had one methyl. This nitrogen needs one hydrogen on it to be neutral. And this one, it's not the carbon nitrogen double bond. There's, none, there's no carbon nitrogen double bond for this one. So the carbon carbon double bond is what turns into a single bond. And now you have the single bond CH3, CH3. So regardless of whether you make the carbon nitrogen double bond or the carbon carbon double bond with a single bond nitrogen attached, if you do step one this and then step two NADH3CN or LICH3, uh, B, sorry, NADH3CN or LIBH3CN, you don't really have to worry about the particulars of the intermediate double bond. So basically the way you can use this is if you ever see in your synthesis a structure that has, say let's say I have a carbon chain like this. I have one, two, nitrogen, like that. And they tell you make this from four carbons or less. What you do, there should be a hydrogen there, make this from four carbons or less. All you have to do is find the nitrogen that's part of the chain and choose a carbon that's single bonded to it. Let's say this carbon. What you're going to do is over the arrow, you're gonna write step one, we'll fill in what step one is in a second, but we know step two should be NABH3CN or LIBH3CN. And since I chose this carbon, what I'm going to do is I'm going to erase that bond that connects the carbon to the nitrogen, put as many net hydrogens on this nitrogen as necessary to make it neutral. Since this has one bond and it needs three to be neutral, you make it NH2. And on the carbon that you erase that bond from, that doesn't have the nitrogen, you're going to draw a double bond up. Because what happens is these, this nitrogen will attack here, this will swing up, proton transfers happen, and this will leave as water as the nitrogen forms a double bond, but the net result is the nitrogen would add here as the oxygen is removed. Hence the carbon-nitrogen double bond that I was talking about before. And then NABH3CN would just turn that into a single bond. So one of these two would go with step one, I'm gonna do the shorter chain, so this, and then I just erase it here. So that's the general idea of how you use reductive amination in a synthesis. Wherever you see a carbon-nitrogen single bond, you can erase that bond, turn it, add some hydrogens to the nitrogen so it's neutral, and the carbon that didn't have the nitrogen, you put a double bond O on it. 
So let's see some practice problems on that now.